Formal language is used in professional or important situations. For example, if you're giving a presentation at work, talking to your colleagues, or if you're writing a letter to your boss. Now let's look at the features of formal language. With formal language, we use full sentences with correct grammar and vocabulary. Contractions are shortened versions of words and we usually place an apostrophe where the letter is missing. We don't use contractions in formal language. For example, we would use the phrase I would instead of I'd. Idioms are expressions used in English. We don't use idioms in formal language. The passive voice is used in formal language. Remember, the passive voice puts emphasis on the action that is done, rather than focusing on the person that has done the action. For example, the documents have been signed. Phrasal verbs are phrases that have a verb and a preposition or adverb. Phrasal verbs have a different meaning to the individual words themselves. We can use phrasal verbs in informal language. However, we don't use phrasal verbs in formal language. Instead, we use other words that mean the same thing. For example, instead of using the phrasal verb look into, I would use the words to investigate. Abbreviations are shortened versions of words. Abbreviations are not used in formal language. For example, ASAP is an abbreviation for as soon as possible. Therefore, I would say as soon as possible and not the abbreviation ASAP. Exclamation marks are also not used in formal language. Imperatives are sentences that start with a verb and generally give a command or instruction. We don't use imperatives in formal language. For example, instead of saying complete the form, I can say, you may complete the form. So this sounds a lot politer. When writing a letter or email, we should follow this format. First, we start with the greeting or opening of a letter. The first option is to start with Dear Sir Madam. This is a general greeting and it's usually used when you're not exactly sure of who will be reading the letter. However, if you know the name of the person you're writing to, then you can start off with that. So Dear Mr. Mrs. followed by the surname. For example, Dear Mr. Jones. Another common greeting is to whom this may concern. Examples of openings are I hope this letter, email finds you well or thank you for your letter, email regarding and then you'd explain what the letter is regarding. Continuing on with the opening, we can say, I hope this letter email finds you well. Or if this is a reply to a letter or an email, then we can say, thank you for your letter email regarding. So depending on the purpose of the letter, the opening will be different. Then we proceed to start the letter. This is where you explain your reason for writing. For example, I'm writing to complain, inform, I'm writing to request information about, I'm writing to you regarding. Following on from this, we can provide more information about the points that we're making. We are delighted to confirm your role at, you will be required to bring your passport to the interview, please find attached my application form. So these are just some examples. Then we finish with a closing sentence. 
For example, I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to meeting you. Or it can be the next steps you want the person to take or a plan of action. Finally, we end off with a formal ending. So if you started your letter with dear, mister or missus, followed by the surname, then you would end off with yours sincerely. If you started the letter with dear sir, madam, then you would end off with yours faithfully. Now let's go through the layout of a letter. In the top right hand corner, we have the writer's address. So if you're writing the letter, then this would be your address. Below this is the date. Below that, in the left hand corner, is the recipient's name and address. So this is the person that you're writing to. Below that, we start to begin the letter. Initially, we begin with the greeting and an opening for the letter. Then we start off with reasons for writing and providing information about the points we're making. It's important to use paragraphs. The paragraphs can be used to talk about each point. So the first paragraph can be used to talk about the first point, the second paragraph can be used to talk about the second point, etc. To finish off, we write a closing sentence. This can be a final thought or a summary of the points that you made. This is also where you would outline the next steps or any requests. For example, if you're writing to complain, then you may request an apology or a refund. If you're applying for a job, then you may request further details regarding the role. If there are no further steps to take, then you can just thank them for reading the letter. Finally, finish off with a formal ending and then your name. So here is an example of a formal letter. As mentioned previously, in the top right hand corner is the sender's address, below that is the date, below that on the left is the recipient's address. Dear Sir Madam, I'm writing to complain about an incident that occurred in your restaurant on the 26th of the 9th, 2020. While my family and I were enjoying our meal, we overheard staff members arguing in the restaurant. This type of behaviour is very unprofessional and particularly distressing for my children to have to hear. My family and I have been regular customers at your restaurant for years and we hope that we can continue to enjoy your service. I trust that you will investigate this matter and take the necessary actions required to ensure customer satisfaction. I look forward to hearing from you. Yours faithfully, Anna Smith.